hi welcome back to the second part of the video so in the first part of the video um, I described my proposal my um, problem statement and I also described the algorithms that I'm going to use along with um, all the accuracies and the execution times so now I'm going to show you all the implementation of the algorithms that uh, the programs that I have written and so I think I should start with the data set that I'll be using so the data set is called as the spam data csv that is my data set that's the complete data set which has 4601 records so we know a little bit about the data set from the spam based documentation this data set uh, by the way i have taken from the uci machine learning website so okay let's go down a little bit okay so the number of instances in the data set as this states is 4601 out of which 39.4 percent emails are uh, spam emails now we have 58 total attributes out of which 57 attributes are continuous attributes and one is a class label the class label describes whether um, or not an email is ham or spam a one is for a spam and a zero is for ham next i want to show you the spam based names so Here we have the words like make, address, all, 3D, R, and as you can see all these words over here. So these are the words that I'm counting the frequency for and then I'm using in my algorithm. Alright, so uh, I have explained my code earlier, like I have explained my implementation earlier, so I think I'll just go ahead and uh, run the algorithm so let's start with the naive Bayes algorithm I have so the class name is naive Bayes dot uh, by like the Python class so here I'll type it in into my machine and run it so since I told like this shows that the split is as I said the split is 67 to 33 percent random split so it says that I have split 4601 records into the training set and the testing set. The accuracy is 81.1718% and uh, the runtime is 1.96 seconds. In the presentation I have shown an average ac accuracy so I shall run it again and we'll see how the accuracy differs again. Oops. Uh, yeah, so now the accuracy goes up and the runtime also increases. So I have taken, so for the presentation I had around 20 such runtimes and accuracies and I had tabulated them and found out the average accuracy and the average runtime. Next I shall show my KNN algorithm. I can show you the code a little bit. So here I have, this is my KNN algorithm. okay all right so here are the functions as the name say they are the load data set function euclidean distance function to find out the euclidean distance between two instances here one instance is from the training set and one is from the testing set then get neighbors which is basically just going to sort all the distances that we found out and find out the k closest neighbors then we have a get response function which is for the classification and get accuracy function here as you can see i have taken the value of k to be 3 i sh i have tried the same thing with the uh, seven values of k as i have described in the first video so i think now let's go ahead and run this okay so that is the python knn dot py Alright, so as we can see, my train set and test set have been divided into 3115 and 1485 records. It's the same um, ratio of 67 to 33. So this is going to take a little bit of time because I there are a lot of comparisons include, uh, included in this algorithm. And the uh, Euclidean distance is calculated and the time squared is, uh, the, like the complexity is n squared. So it definitely takes a lot of time. So let's just wait it out. I think in the meanwhile I can 
just explain my um, SVM code and then I can show you how to run both of them while this one gets executed. So this is my multi-class SVM which is my program for implementing support vector machines. So here I'm doing the same thing. I'm opening the training data and so here I have pre-divided my training data and my testing data and here the ratio is almost 50% each. So I have um, 46001 by 2 records as my training data and 46001 by 2 records as my testing data which have been selected randomly. Alright, so here then I'm opening the testing data and I am using the function svm.svc and the parameter over here for the svc function is the probability which I'm setting as true and then I'm doing the fitting. So this is um, including slack variables and in the end I'm giving you the running time of my algorithm and um, also so I can use uh, svm.newsvc as well which I have done in the for the presentation I have included the results for the same in the paper as well as the presentation so let's see if okay it's still running yeah that that takes a while so if um, as we have seen that the running time was around 306 seconds so that's about five minutes so it's a little bit long So um, I finally have the results for the training algorithm that I was showing you and uh, as you know the value of 2 that I've written for this code is 3 and the accuracy has turned out to be higher than the accuracy of the code that I had seen earlier and the time taken is lower. So the accuracy is about 80% which is, is good and the time taken is 3.7 seconds which is really high as compared to the MyPay data even though we saw the time taken was around 1.62.4 seconds so this is about four to five minutes which is a long time but then also my data set is a pretty large one it has more than 4,000 records and uh, seeing the amount of work being done into my algorithm I think it is quite fine so I had described the SVM program of mine earlier so now I'll just go ahead and run the SVM code so that would be five times using the testing and the training data set and I'm clicking the null okay. alright so there was an issue with the SVM code which was an indentation issue and I just fixed it I don't know how that well, how that happens so anyway so let's move ahead I shall show you the SVM implementation again there you go and uh, so the output of my SVM is actually stored in two files one of the files stores the results like the classes and one of the files stores the probability if it belongs to uh, the class 0 or the class 1 and this one the output in on the terminal should show me the accuracy uh, and the time taken so we can see that the time taken is it's 5.28 seconds which is um, pretty fast but it's not as fast as um, the nine phase algorithm I can show you the results and like the two files that store the results so one of them th that's the result probability so here we see that the there are two columns one column the left column is the probability that it's a non-spam email the right one is a probability that it's a spam email so wherever the probability of left is more than the probability of right the outcome is a zero otherwise the outcome is a one so I can show you the result dot text and we can properly compare outcomes so you can see the first one the output is a one 
that is because in the first one my right side probability is higher that is the probability of the email being a spam is higher and in the second one it's the same it's a one and we can again see that the probability is higher on the right side so that was about my implementation um, and my programs and my results and as we can see like as I have shown in the conclusion it seems like the knife based classification algorithm is the best algorithm for uh, email spam filtering at least for the given data set because it totally depends on the distribution as well of the data set how many of the spam to ham ratio of the data set etc then I think would be support vector machines which are not as fast as knife based classification algorithm but they are pretty fast and the last one would be k nearest neighbors now depending on the value of k the accuracy time and the execution the accuracy and the execution time do change a bit but they are still not as good as those for um, svm and knife base so that's about it thank you for watching this video